Hey everyone, this is Lisa from Life in Layouts and today I have a layout using the Scrapbook Generation Day 2 sketch from their National Scrapbook Day. I'm going to be pulling out this Hippity Hoppity collection from Doodlebug and I'm going to be documenting photos from Eli's Easter Basket in 2023. I am really, really close to killing this kit. I have planned out two more layouts and I think that it will be done. And I think I talked about this on another video. I really want to start a series maybe, and I haven't decided yet how I'm going to do that, but it's like killing a kit, but not really start to finish, but just like I have these collections that are left over and there's maybe like one or two more layouts that can be done in the collection. And I want to like get them used up and get them out of my room. That is in the works and coming very, very soon. This particular sketch basically calls for big strips of paper. Surprise, surprise, right? Like I am just in my strips of paper mode right now. These strips of papers are three inches long. And on the left-hand side, they span the entire layout. So three by 12. And then on the right-hand side of the layout, they're going to be three by nine. Now for the center piece, I knew that I was going to be covering that center area up. So I decided to cut down the yellow strips and I really didn't measure it. I just mainly decided that I was going to figure out how much space I needed. So the grid on the left hand side is 10 inches. So only two inches of the yellow was showing. So I probably cut it at like two and a quarter. And then on the right hand side of the layout, seven and a half inches were going to be covered with the photos. So I think I cut that piece of paper down probably to like one and a half inches and I knew that I was going to be tucking it under. The sketch calls for a four by six photo in the center of the grid on the left hand side and then it calls for two three by three photos and then two three by three pieces of paper with two two and a half by two and a half inch photos on it and so I went ahead and cut that out and then on the right hand side of the layout it calls for two four by six photos one of them is going to be up on a mat. We all know that scrapbook generations cannot do a layout without a quarter inch strip. I like the way that they did it this time. The quarter inch strips are actually at the top and the bottom of the layout. So I go ahead and add those down and then using my T-square ruler to make sure that I have those three inch strips down as well. And those three inch strips are one and a half inches from the top and bottom of the layout. So I just used my T-square ruler to measure up and added those down. So the center photo is going to be a photo of Eli's Easter basket for this particular year of 2023. I actually won this Easter basket. I was doing a vendor event for my Scentsy stuff and there was a 31 girl there. And usually I go around and try to support all the other vendors. I'll talk to them, get their information, mainly for the ability to communicate with other vendors that are in the area. I'm obviously not trying to take their business, but if they're going to vendor events and selling their product, just finding out what other vendor events are local to the area, as well as giving them information. and. She was like, oh, you should enter my drawing for this Easter basket because it was around Easter time. And I was like, oh, no, that's OK. Like, I don't want to take away from your other customers. And she's like, oh, it's not a big deal. You probably won't win anyways, which I know that. Like, I know the odds of winning those raffles are very low. And when she called me at the end of the afternoon and was like, hey, you won the Easter basket. I was like, are you sure? Like, you could pull another name. And she's like, no, it's really not that big of a deal. And so that's where this Easter basket came. And it's really, it's a very cute 31 Easter basket. Actually, Eli has the Easter basket in his room and it's full of his candy. He calls it his Easter candy all year long, even though he continues to refill it. So the four by six photo is the Easter basket itself. And then the three by three or the two and a half by two and a half photos are just close ups of certain items in his Easter basket. He's really into like 3D printing items. And so at that same vendor event, there was a lady who was selling 3D printed items and there was a this really cool dragon that actually moved around. So that's on the top of his Easter basket. I'm not sure if you can see it in the photos, but the two photos that look very similar on the top are just details of that dragon that I got him for Easter. And then the two photos of Eli actually holding up his jelly beans and his Pez candy, because those are two of his favorite, actually had him pick out which one was his favorite. And I took a picture of that to make sure that I could document that. Uh, I put those 
particular photos up on Funfilm. Once I get the photos down, I'm gonna go ahead and add the paper to the right. And of course I struggle a lot trying to get the paper straight. Like I've just given up on trying to put it down straight the first time. Before I was cutting a lot of this out because I was like, oh, like no one wants to see me struggle, but you guys seem to enjoy it. So I'm gonna leave it all in and just talk right through it. Hopefully that will help bring my watch hours up because that's what I need to do. So once I get the paper down, then I went ahead and added that one photo of Eli trying to open up his really big Easter egg. That big Easter egg came from his Nana. She brought over additional candy for him as well. And then there's the traditional early morning photo with your Easter basket where he has literally just woken up. He's still got bedhead. I love those types of photos because they really showcase, you know, the other side of it where we're not really getting all dolled up for our photos. It's just what you look like when you first wake up in the morning. I did mat that particular photo on the orange linen paper, the same orange that I used on the left hand side of the layout. And then I forgot to add the quarter inch strip to the upper right hand side of the layout. So I go ahead and add that down as well. And for this particular layout, I know I posted this over on Instagram because I was struggling with what color thread to add to the florals. Like obviously I used the green on the green, the yellow on the yellow, and then I asked for suggestions and blew one out in the comments. So if you are not following me over on Instagram, and you want to get all of these behind the scene type posts and questions that I ask, make sure you check out my description box below. My Instagram link is listed there. I pulled out the word basket from the Doodlebug chit chat and I wanted my title to say my Easter basket. So I found these two other pieces from the chit chat. One I think said happy Easter and the other one, I'm not exactly sure, it might have said my basket, but I ended up cutting off the pieces so that it says my Easter basket. And I really like the way that that title sits on top of that photo on the right hand side. Then I found this little bunny who is holding some chicks. So I added that right next to the word basket over on the far right hand side. I also had this sticker that was Easter eggs in a basket, but I didn't like the opening of the top part of it, like where the handle of the basket was. So I have this white shimmer paper that sits with the rest of my white scraps over to the left of me. And I just went ahead and backed it right behind the Easter basket. I think that that looks better there next to the photo. Like I didn't want to see the photo behind the basket itself. Now the sketch calls for a bunch of flowers over on the right hand side. And when I saw this sketch, I knew I was wanting to use up the Doodlebug collection. And I was like, oh, I know that I have a ton of Easter eggs in that collection. And I thought that that would be perfect for this section over on the far right. So I'm going through the collection and pulling out the Easter eggs and I'm removing the adhesive because I've had problems with the adhesive like sticking down and then ripping the paper and I knew I was gonna probably have to move the Easter eggs around quite a bit until I can figure out like the exact order that I wanted. So I do spend the time to remove the ATG from the backs of them. I first started out with the larger Easter eggs and once I decided what order I wanted them in, I do go ahead and add the ATG back on and put those down. And then I started with the smaller Easter eggs that were in some of the sticker sheets. I do decide to put some of those up on Fun Foam. I am not good with this type of clustering with like overlapping things and making it look good. I just struggle with it so much. I don't feel like it ever looks right. I feel like it just looks like you just threw stuff on there. I added some of the pieces down and then I was like, I'm gonna take a little break and I'm gonna work on the left-hand side of the layout. So I added this tag that says, I love candy, which is absolutely Eli. He is definitely a candy person. And I also added an Easter egg next to that little tag. That tag had like a tag hole and I decided just to cover it up because I was like, oh, I'm not gonna worry about it. I was thinking I was gonna use that doodle pop, but I didn't like the way that that looked. So I went back to the right hand side of the layout and started adding some flowers. And I was really trying to make sure that the flowers didn't clash with the Easter eggs, like making sure the colors were separated. Once I get all the flowers down, then I went back to the left hand side, again, taking a break from it. And I added this little green square that has an Easter bunny, as well as a little chick. And I felt like that little section played into the Easter Bunny and the chick. 
next to the word basket on the right. I'm no expert at all in these types of clusters, but I do feel like starting with the largest and then working with the smallest, making sure that you add a bunch of different sizes really does help with that particular type of cluster. Then I pull out my color boxes in green, orange, yellow, and blue, and start adding some enamel dots as well as some bling to the section as well. Then I realized it was like spread out too much. I wasn't following my own rule. Like when I'm creating clusters, I always make sure that everything is touching something else. So I moved everything in just a little bit and that really brought it together. I felt like it looked a lot better when things were touching and overlapping and tucked underneath each other. I left all of this in because there's a story for me to tell you guys. On this particular night when I'm scrapbooking, normally I scrapbook um, later in the evening after we eat dinner. Eli's kind of winding down. He's taking a shower. He's getting ready for bed, brushing his teeth, things like that. Well, he came into my room and said, my sink isn't draining. And I was like, okay. And I had remembered that like the week before I went into his bathroom, I don't use his bathroom a lot, but the week before I had gone in there and I had noticed that his drain was stopped up a little bit. Like it wasn't not draining, but it was definitely slow to drain. And so I had told myself I need to tell him how to like clean it out and it just slipped my mind. So when he told me that it wasn't draining at all, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I meant to tell you this. And I went in there and was talking to him and it wasn't moving whatsoever. So I went and got a wire coat hanger and I was like, oh, let me see if I can unclog it. That wasn't working. Bits and pieces of what I thought was dirt or grime or whatever was coming up. So I was like, what the heck is stuck down there? So reluctantly, I was like, I'm gonna have to take this pipe off and that's just such a pain in the butt. So I had to like take everything out from underneath the sink to be able to get the pipe taken off because you know, you gotta put a bucket under it and all that. So I get all of that done and I'm taking the threading off and you know, obviously there's water coming out because there's still water in the sink and it hasn't drained. And I go to pull the U-shape pipe off. And as I do, this huge, huge bullfrog just slithers out of the pipe. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah, the joys of living in Florida and um, the craziness of things that we find in our pipes. So he was definitely dead. He was a little bloated. So I took him outside into our little swamp area in the back there and I am sure that he was quickly devoured by our snakes and other creatures in the back. All right guys, after that fun story, I am sure that you are ready for this video to be over. So here is my final layout as well as some close-ups. If you enjoyed this video, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already and you wanna see more double page layout inspiration, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope that you have a scrappy day.